What's up? This is Daniel from iApologia.com, where science, reason, and Christianity meet. Today, I want to talk about voting. Um, I'm not going to be talking about the exact title or the, the 12 huge mistakes that Christians can avoid coming to, to politics, as you see here on the screen. Rather, I'm going to be talking about something else. I'm going to be jumping between two different screens. Uh, first, this screen here, which I'll go over uh, an article I, used, I just recently wrote. And then I'll, I'll break out the, this 12 items later um, in a totally different video. So do keep an eye out for those, or they might be made already by the time you watch this, where I talk about these 12 mistakes that Christians make. So this one, though, I'll be, I'll be addressing the opening here, and I'll be addressing the closing thoughts. And the closing thoughts are 10 things, 10 big ideas that I I'd suggest for you as a Christian or for you as a you know, wise person to, to promote and to think about as you go to the polling booth. And then here's another thing, too. There's a lot of other ideas in these two uh, parts, the very front and the very back end of this post. So feel free to stick around and tell me what you think below. Um, if you like this video, feel, feel free to like, subscribe, and also don't forget to share this on social media. All right, let's get started and talk about the 12 huge mistakes, the opening to the 12 huge mistakes Christians can avoid in politics. Again, this is not going to be on those 12 mistakes. Rather, it's just going to be the opening and the closing. And we'll be talking about those 10 issues that you should think about as you vote. So I'm going to read that off here, and let's, let's see where it goes. Um, right after Trump became president, um, I wrote an innocuous social media post on something he said, talking about Trump. Someone told me to stop defending him because my thoughts would turn off unbelievers. I was surprised because my thoughts in that post were fairly neutral. Um, I think it was strange as well because many believers like him and others don't like him. Also, when did things change where one can't promote good things? If someone is doing good things, and I wasn't even promoting him at that time, by the way, um, when have we become pansies for truth instead of oaks? Of course, we shouldn't be jerks. I, I don't know, however, that I'm, I didn't know that I was supposed to abstain from promoting good. So, under so unbelievers are not turned off. This does not make sense to me. Maybe it makes sense to you if you do tell me below. Um, also, back then as now, I'm left scratching my head. It seems that the establishment, the progressive leftists, and people in general I don't trust seem to scream Trump is an evil and dangerous man. Now, either he is more evil than they are, and they are pretty evil themselves, or else he is overrunning their progressive Marxist march. It strikes me that it's the latter. He is eroding their progress. Let me take this another direction. We need to point out hypocrisy in our culture. Many have imbibed the idea that Trump is a master divider. Really? Compared to whom? The previous corrupt administration over here of Joe Biden and Jim Biden and, and, Ru and Hunter Biden? And the corrupt dealings with Burisma and China and Ukraine and Russia? Corrupt bureaucrats and corrupt media and that orchestrated a fake Russian story about Trump. The whole idea was to topple him. And don't forget the overwhelmingly anti-Trump media. Where is the call for justice in our woke culture? Stop the wokeness and become awake. Christians also held a double standard. Many rightfully criticize Trump's character, but wrongfully ignore Biden's immorality immoral beyond Trump's bad character. Consider his rampant financial power corruption, vulgarity, plagiarism, lying, and womanizing. Even more damaging is turning a blind eye to their own sin and the sin in the church. I've worked with many Christians who blatantly sin and cuss like sailors. Then they also allow uh, leftists promoting sexual, moral, and vulgar speaking teachers to teach their children. Now, if it's if it's not in the classroom, it's in the break room, that's for sure. If we really want to see a changed nation, shouldn't we start with ourselves? Shouldn't we first start with our own communities, our own families? Government leaders are the symptom, not the disease. They represent us and reflect us. They're, they are not the cause of sin and vulgarity. We are. To change a nature, nation, we need to change ourselves. Often people wonder why I address politics and as a Christian, but I wonder why not. Don't political ideas 
uh, intersect with culture and, and worldview, societal issues? Don't we want to promote ideas that co- coincide with the Christian worldview? Don't we want clear thinking, dedicated and committed Christians, electorate, impacting the culture? Often I hear ideas that permeate Christian culture that work against our impact. I'll address those later as you can see the first one here, my kingdom is not of this world, so I don't vote. I will not be addressing that here. Let's just jump to the very end where we're talking about those 10 items that to think about as you go to vote because these are very important 10 items. Let me just read through this until the conclusion of the article and then we'll call that done for this video. As Christians, we should uh, never be uncertain of where we stand when we go to, poli- go to politics. We have principles that, ground, that are grounded in reality. These principles should always guide us when voting. Some of the principles that guide me as I vote and help me choose the best uh, person includes the following items. First, vote live. Abortion is the murdering of the most innocent among us, unborn human babies. Vote for the abolition of human abortion. Two, vote free market. Socialism not only gives rise to poverty, but also theft, and it rejects biblical grounded private property. Wealth distribution should be voluntary, not forced, which is theft. Three, vote liberty. Remember, uh, the larger the government, the smaller the person. The greater the government gun, the lesser the personal rights. Four, vote family. This is important. The family is a primary cornerstone of society. We need to rise up against the erosion of the biblical family. Five, vote sexual morality. The normalization of homosexuality, LGBTQ, and same-sex marriage and shacking up has given us a degraded and demised culture. This promotes family breakdown and social ills. Vote justice. Many innocent and unjust, many innocent and justly are unjustly discriminated against. We want a fair and just government that doesn't discriminate on one's ethnicity, gender, economic condition. Social justice and critical theory is dangerous and is in opposition to true biblical justice. Seven, vote liberty. Around the world, Christians are being persecuted. We need to promote and vote for religious liberty and less government regulation of churches and worship both publicly and privately. Eight, vote school choice. This is a huge one. The parents biblically have been given the task to train up their children. They not the state or anyone else should be choosing the education for their children. Nine, f- vote fossil fuel. Of- often fossil fuels are said to be bad. Actually, fossil fuels are pro-human and save lives. It also helps replenish the earth with much needed carbon dioxide to increase plant growth. That's the atmosphere, by the way. F- Ten, and the last one, uh, vote deregulation. Large governments that regulate you and industry have much in common with fascism. The government has a duty, but that duty is not to get involved with our private lives and industry. One last encouragement as you go to vote, don't be a wimp. Don't fall prey to the politically correct culture of not talking religion and politics and polite company. What else is there to talk about? Sports? Well, that's political now. So is our occupations and our communities and everything else. Stand up for the good, because when good people don't stand, evil succeeds. Remember Edmund Burke's quote, the only thing necessary for triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Again, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Share this video on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever you share your videos at. Um, uh, the more you like, the more you subscribe, the more you share, the more you comment, that helps drive up uh, numbers, which is good because that when you do that, other people start watching as well, and that helps get this, this word out so other people can learn as well. So if you felt that, found, found this helpful, feel free to share. Uh, encouragement, go out and give your world Christ.